Hi everyone, it's Dr. Steve Weiner, and I'm going to talk to you today about hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating. It affects millions of people in the U.S., and I'm going to talk about a paper that I wrote as well, and actually a new technique, so you listen up. So hyperhidrosis is affecting 4.8% of the U.S. population. That's greater than 15 million people in the U.S. Axillary is the most common, that means under the arm. It's about 50%, but it also can occur on the hands, feet, face, scalp, and so forth, even on the body. So primary is a disease actually of the sweat glands, and secondary, it's from a secondary cause. So 69% of people that have hyperhidrosis have an emotional and physical impact. It affects their work and social environments in 63%. It limits their physical activity in 50%. So it's a negative impact on health has been compared to vitiligo, chronic puritis, and psoriasis. And they also have a higher number of skin infections. So it really is a problem in the population. What's very interesting is it actually it varies from country to country, probably a genetic variation. Um, Sweden uh, is 5.5. Actually, Vancouver, Canada is 12.3. Shanghai is 14.5. So um, when you consider both primary and secondary, Germany and Vancouver and Shanghai and Sweden are very high. So it affects a lot of people, up to 20% of people in Sweden. So there's a lot of different treatments available and I'm gonna go through them briefly. I'm gonna go through how we treat it here at the Aesthetic Clinic. So topical aluminum chloride is probably the most common recommended treatment. It works, but not that well for most patients. There's Cubrexa, which is glycopyrrolium pad. It's an anticholinergic, and patients report about a 32% improvement. Oral anticholinergics, glycopyrrolate, are also given, but they also have other side effects. There's other orals, oxybutynin, pilocarpine. Ionophoresis, um, it's a pretty long process and it's temporary. So once you've tried all these above here, now it's time to try things that work more aggressively. And injecting botulism toxin A really does work. And I'm gonna show you a novel way to inject that. Microwave thermolysis, mirror dry, also works, but there's sometimes prolonged pain, three weeks, and there's a lot of swelling. Another type of treatment is curette or liposuction. Um, there's also surgical, where you actually go in and do a mini thoracotomy and you do a sympathectomy, but I'm gonna to talk to you about radiofrequency microneedling as a treatment. It's really good and really fast. So when you talk about hyperhidrosis and you do papers, you need to talk about the severity score. So uh, one is my uh, axilla is sweaty, but it never interferes with my daily activities. And then four would be my, my axilla is very sweaty and intolerable and really restricts my activities and then two and three are in between. So the traditional form of treating axillary hyperhidrosis is using Botox, and it's 100 to 150 units, 50 to 75 per side. At four weeks, the HDSS score, which I just previously showed you, was one or two in 85% of the patients. So that's pretty good. At 12 weeks, it was 90% one or two, and the results last between six and nine months. Unfortunately, repeated injections are needed because it's only a temporary effect. Patients want more long-term effects. So I have a little different uh, way to inject than the traditional way where you do microboluses. It, I call it um, similar to the micro Botox technique. I use a dilute form of the neuromodulator. So I add two cc's of preserved saline to a vial of either Dysport or Botox because you can't get that much saline inside the vial. Then I draw it up into a 10 cc syringe and I add another eight cc's of preserved saline. Then I use the Mesoram, and um, you get it at mesoram.com, and it's an apparatus that allows you to inject simultaneously five or seven needles, but they're very shallow, four millimeters in depth. You cool the skin off and then you do multiple injections in the area that you wanna treat and you do five cc's per side. Now there's gonna be a little left in the mesoram and you flush that with another two cc's 
of, of saline and you get all the Botox or Dysport out of the chamber. It takes around a minute per side and much less painful than the multiple injections. So now for hand and foot hyperhidrosis, now we're moving from here to the hands and feet. The traditional injections uh, are done around every 10 millimeters, about every centimeter. I use Frozen C in the hand, as well as Artec, which is a cooling device, Zimmer Z-Wave, and Ice. I've experimented with Aquid Gold treatment, which are those uh, canister with the mini needles, and I didn't get that much improvement with that. So uh, some of my colleagues took that and ran with it, and they're using it routinely. Okay, you just have to use probably more Botox or Dysport to get the same effect. So, uh, but it's much less painful using the Aqua Gold on the hands than it is with the injections. So here's where I'm gonna talk to you where I think the people should go with hyperhidrosis of the axilla. It's using RFM. I used the Genius, I used to use the Infini. So the eccrine and apocrine glands, those are the glands that secrete sweat. They lay at the deep dermis or upper subcutaneous fat in the hypodermis. The RFM creates areas of coagulation that partially destroy these glands. Okay, I call it almost like a carpet bomb effect. So you're kind of just, you don't know exactly where those glands are, but you're just hitting them repeatedly at different levels and um, you end up hitting most of them with this treatment. The glands don't grow back. They're different than the sebaceous glands, which do grow back, the ones that secrete sebum in acne. So these don't grow back. So the results are rather long-term or even permanent. I'm gonna show you a paper that it wasn't. So when I'm doing RFM for axillary hyperhidrosis, I do a starch iodine test to document where the sweat is. Because because you, uh, I, I'm gonna show you another picture where I didn't document it exactly and I only partially treated the sweat. So then I apply a topical anesthetic and then I clean it off with sterile Hippocleans. I use the Zimmer Z-Wave and Frozen C to improve comfort. The Frozen C has added a lot more comfort to this device. So the depths are 3.5, 3.5, 2.5, and I do one or two passes alternating sides with the RFM, the Genius. Very high energies are used, so I use uh, 40 to 60 uh, millijoules per pin when I'm doing this with the Genius. The treatment time is about 15 to 20 minutes. So now we'll get to the paper that I did with Dr. Chilla Curry and Rob and Grossman, and that was in JDD in 2018. And our results were this. Anesthesia was either topical or the mesoram injections or with Pronox. Hyperhidrosis scores went from 3.2 to 1.6. So they went in half. Satisfaction scores were 8 out of 10. Results were apparent at day 1 through day 7. So the glands stopped secreting rather rapidly. You don't have to wait that long to see results. There was a long follow-up at three years that continues to show persistence of decreased sweat. Side effects were redness, bruising, and soreness, but it was very limited. So in my experience, most patients only require two treatments, long-term results, and the sweat was manageable after that with just OTC uh, medications. So um, they were like a one. All my patients were a one hyperhidrosis score after treatment, at least two treat. Actually, I never treated anyone with three treatments. It was one or two treatments. So this is another study. This was done in Korea um, in 2013 using RFM. Uh, so two treatments at four week intervals, the hyperhidrosis scores were 3.3. At one month, the scores went down to 1.5. At two months, they went slightly up to 1.8. But you know, though, as I showed you, those scores are kind of arbitrary, so someone could say they're a two or a three sometimes, and that could sway this a little bit. The biopsies showed that there was definitely gland destruction. And they also showed that sweat reduction was documented with, with some type of TWA meter that shows that the sweat was decreased, and there were no adverse side effects. So this is an interesting study because this kind of contradicts my study. Three treatments at three week intervals. The hyperhidrosis score went from 3.4 basically to 2.5. But at one year there was 46% had relapse. 
They said that the relapse was associated with a high BMI score. So that means they were heavier. So what I suspect is that there was thicker skin there and the needles didn't actually penetrate down to the glands quite as well. So they didn't get quite as good a result. The other thing that I did is I looked at the energy settings and the energy settings were much lower than my protocol. So take it for what it is. They said there was relapse, but I, my protocols are much stronger than theirs. I also treat facial hyperhidrosis, okay? I haven't written a paper about this, but, and this is uh, what uh, I have found. I've treated four patients with RF microneedling for facial hydrosis. Two to three treatments were needed. The patient reported 30 to 40% in improvement after one, and then 60 to 65 improvements after two or three. And the results were long-term. Okay, if they had underlying rosacea, you need to treat that with a vascular laser because sometimes that exacerbates the sweating. So I've been asked this several times. Can I treat the hands and the feet with RFM, RF microneedling? I think pain control is very difficult. Okay, swelling can be prolonged. There was a person that I heard did this in South America and they had a week or long uh, hands swelling. And unfortunately they did both hands so the person was incapacitated for over a week. I don't really know what the results were. The problem with the hands are the depths of the skin on the hand is highly variable. So you don't actually know uh, how deep you, you need to go with the micro needles. So yeah, I can do ultrasound, but it's gonna change because you have calluses and so forth throughout the hand. So it's very difficult and it's very painful. As I said, maybe ultrasound might be helpful in the future, uh, but I haven't uh, had that around long enough to try it. So what's the future? So I'm gonna to talk to you about some things that are kind of interesting for the future. So I told you that glycopyrrolate, uh, which basically is an anticholinergic, is useful when taken orally. But what they did is um, they made it topical. And what they found is 53% had an HDSS score of one or two when they all started at greater than three and a greater than 50% reduction in the galvanic sweat score. Okay, great, okay, they improved. But the vehicle, the control, had 36% improvement. So 36% improvement versus 53% improvement. And kind of shady. So this shows you exactly how it works. So um, the compound binds to the sweat gland and the acetylcholine cannot be released um, when, when it's added. I think that this is actually um, very appealing, okay? This isn't yet FDA approved, okay? Candescent biomedical, CDX 101. So you have this patch that you put on under the arm and when water is exposed to this patch, it heats up. The heating up is similar to the RF microneedling but not to as much degree uh, it's an alkali metal and the heat causes the sweat gland to shrink. So you put it on for about three minutes and the effects start at 24 hours. As I told you, the glands shut off once they're injured. 69% improvement persists at six weeks with one treatment and 89% still respond at six weeks. Side effects were minor and they were treated with a steroid cream. So how does this work? So you have an alkali metal, and when you add water, it causes heat. And that heat is exactly in the area where the glands are in the axilla. Okay, and, and this is showing you that there's an adhesive background and the alkali metal. It's very, to use by, very easy to use by layer path. So maybe this is the future for people that want less invasive procedures. It's not gonna give you permanent results, but it gives you at least six weeks, and if you want to come in every six weeks to the doctor's office, well, maybe it's an option for you. So that concludes my little slideshow on hyperhidrosis. Uh, I talked to you about RF microneedling being my choice uh, for treating axillary hyperhidrosis. It's quick, simple, and very effective. Mirror dry is also used for that. I don't have it. The problem with mirror dry is it's only a one-trick pony. It's really only good for 
axillary hyperhidrosis, whereas arc microneedling is great for a lot of different things. So thanks for watching. See you later.